This episode is supported by Battlefilm.com. Take control of armies from the five kingdoms of Arcania and vie for the throne of the ancient king in Wrath of Kings. Master your skills on the battlefield over on BeastOfWar.com. Fame and fortune awaits in Blood and Plunder. Set sail in the golden age of piracy and claim the riches of the Caribbean at BeastOfWar.com. Happy weekend, everybody. It's Az here with Beasts of War, and this Saturday I am joined by Justin and the lovely, ever so sexy, furious Ben. Yeah, and I think Hello. Ben may have just tried to give me bunny ears. <laughs> go on, Ben. Yeah, if you reach over, yeah, go right, right hand, Ben. Right hand, right hand, hand. You, No, no, other way, blue, other way, right, other way, other way. E, oh, e, no, no, further no, back, no. further back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to the weekend. I hope everyone is starting into their hobby this morning. You're very, very welcome along here. Um, we're going to get the show started. We're actually going to get the show, show started talking about the future, um, which is a bit odd, I guess. Um, but Justin and myself are going to be going to SteamCon uh, mm. next weekend. Um, so anyone who doesn't know, SteamCon is SteamForge Games' own convention where they can show off Guild Ball, of course. They can mm -hmm. show off Dark Souls. They can yep. show off um, Shadow Games. Yes. We... Hopefully, all being well, or uh, if we get the time, are going to be taking part in the first ever Shadow Games tournament. Here's the thing: <laughs> I, I am so tempted to go into this tournament now. If you don't know Shadow Games, uh, myself and a couple of the guys from Steam Forge played it on a weekend or a good while back. The whole concept is you're playing cards in, but you can lie about what it is, get its effect, and get a bonus to that. I am so tempted to play this entire tournament playing. Yeah, it is actually not bluff at all. It's it's a crazy game that actually develops lies on lies because you expect even the good honest people to be lying to you because there's a bonus for lying. Um, and it is all card games, but it's based around guild balls. So you're playing captains, you're playing mascots, you're playing people who support sponsors and, and things uh, and tactics cards and these kind of things. Um, and the problem is all the information is open. So as you're trying to work your way up to get enough essentially influence to win, everyone else is like, I know Az or Justin are just one away from winning. If I just steal that one from them, mm. that's going to prevent them winning and, and everyone can target you and gang up on you, which is a bit of a concern. But what I've asked the Steamforge guys, I haven't told you yet, this yet, is that we be in opposite ends of the tournament if possible. Because it's tables of four, <laughs> but I believe, no, no, but I'll tell you why. Okay. Because it's not to stay away from you. It's that we have 32 people, uh -huh. so we should have eight tables okay. of four. Now, if we manage to make it through, we get through to maybe the 16. Then maybe the eight, uh -huh. and then maybe you and I can meet at the final four. Okay. So you and I, so Justin and I, will hopefully vlog along, mm. give everyone updates at home as we're going through the tournament, and hopefully meet at the final table. Okay. Uh, if not, we'll find out which one of the better liar, which who's the better liar between us. <laughs> That's what I'm saying though. I'm very tempted to play the entire tournament and not lie once. Yeah. And see how far I get. The game makes you want to think everyone is lying to you all the time. Yeah. And if people call you lying and you're being honest, then you can steal from them. Exactly. So it's, yeah, being honest is legit. I, I, I'm tempted to do that as a tactic for at least round <laughs> one. Just play the entire game. Well, see, that's lying. it. You just, you play honestly for, you know, 32, 16, 8, and you get the final table. You just completely, completely change your strategy then at that point. I mean, that, that's the thing. Everybody's going to expect you to start lying at some point. Mm. So if you just keep playing honestly, every time you play one, they're going to look and go, is now the moment he's lying to me? We'll, we'll find out. Yeah. So we'll be at that next week. That's in Manchester. Yes. Um, there'll also be loads of Guild Ball stuff from that. Mm -hmm. We are hoping to play some of the new Dark Souls card game as well. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we've got some Resident Evil, so there's going to be some further expansions of that we're hoping to get down for a session with. There's also some... The Union and Chains will be opened up again yep. over that weekend to make the final decisions on which characters are going to be made. Mm -hmm. um, so it's only a 200-person event. Mm -hmm. So we're going to kind of... Enable because it's, it's still growing. SteamCon's still mm. picking up pace and, and increasing each year. Um, so we're going, so anyone that can't make it, we can give you guys a feel for mm. what it'd be like to, to be there. Um, there is something that's also called the Super Secret Squirrel event. Oh, yes. Um, but it's super and it's secret. Now, we may try and give you guys little tidbits of what that's about once we get there, but for now, we have to stay. I know, I know nothing. Don't, know, don't no. even bother asking me. I have not heard about this. This is news to me. And now, if any of you are, are going to SteamCon, please do come and say hello while we're there. It'd be absolutely fantastic to meet you. But if you're not going, I have a big request to ask of you all because one of the big things at SteamCon is their keynote where they talk about what's coming up in the next year, all the things you can expect releases-wise. And there's a Q&A after that, and we are going to get the opportunity to voice your questions. 
So if you're interested in anything Steamforge Games does, if you're interested in any of the IPs they've been exploring, or where the future of Guild Ball and the stories are going, what happens when they keep bringing people back from the dead, and, and, and all this kind of stuff, if you have any questions, come over to www.beastofwar.com or even on YouTube if you like, and leave a comment with your question. We will aim to pitch that for you, and hopefully come back and get an answer. We, they will be recording it, so the whole keynote and the whole Q&A session will ensure that we get that out there, um, either through Steamforge or through ourselves, so you can see your question getting asked. So any questions, comments below, that'd be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So that's, realize we're that's just going to get flooded with questions now. I hope so. No, I, I do hope so. And they, they were asking if we could play in Guild Ball. Um, they're doing some crazy Guild Ball events. Um, I, am, I am very tempted. I've got two painted teams, mm. so if you want to borrow the Brewers, oh, my I'm, goodness. I'm happy to run out with the Blacksmiths for myself. I, I don't want beaten that badly. Last time Jamie, <laughs> Jamie and I played, it was, uh, I think it was 11-1 in turn two. It was, it was a thrashing. It was, it was awesome though. It was really enjoyable to get beaten by someone who really knows their stuff. Mm. There's nothing better than seeing an expert at work. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I'm, I'm thinking I probably will bring my teams with me. You so might as well. If, if any of the community members out there are coming along, you mm. might play a game. If I get time, yeah, I'm happy to play. Yeah, if it, the event runs from the Friday, Saturday, and the Sunday, and it is 24 hours, so it's mm. open play a lot of the time um, over at Steam Con, so you can do what you like. But they also do special events at like 2 a.m. in the morning. Mm. One of the things they're doing is multi ball, which is basically guild ball where you kick the ball off, and then after the ball's been kicked off, two other balls spawn. Wow. So you have cool. three balls <laughs> getting knocked about the pitch. Oh my god. Up to playing up to 16, I think, instead of 12. My, 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 my meta brain is just going, no, how do I work out whenever there's three angles of attack in guild ball? <laughs> they're also doing things as well where you can, instead of playing with a faction or a guild, mm. you can play with nationalities and have a national team. Ah, yes. So you can mix up characters between the guilds, but play with them. If they were from the same country or same part yes. of the world. Um, so yes, it, as I say, we'll not talk about it any more. Um, but next week, Justin and I will, will give you guys some updates on how we're getting on there. I imagine we'll have a few Facebook videos of me just running around going, yay. And you'll probably catch me <laughs> sleeping on the plane again. Yeah, well, no, this is, this is a short now, every one. Every time now. <laughs> Um, so what else is coming up? Talking more about the future. Mm. You may have seen on our set, we've been parading about this gorgeous copy of Aristea. <laughs> oh, just it's just it's just gorgeous. Um, so the pre-order for this, yeah, that have been waiting to lay their hands Ooh, on this. Look at it, so pretty. Yeah, we'll go this way. Which one's your favourite? Um, just for looks. Just for looks. Yeah. I'm a softie for our big, uh, our big tank here. Oh, Maximus! Maximus, yeah. I'm a, I'm a softie for blue. I'm a blue guy. Uh, I think if you're, if you're in, and interestingly, those space marines don't do it for me, but blue in general, it kind of resonates. Music, with yeah, you? resonates with me. Right. Um, so, two important things on the back of that. First of all, the pre-order for our stay, if it's something that you're interested in, is open until Monday the 13th. Yes. So that is next Monday, and then the pre-order is done. Yes. Um, I believe, Ben, you can maybe keep me right on this, but I think there was a collector's edition that you could there go is. into. Yeah. There is, where you get yes. the plastic miniatures that are in the box, mm. but you also get a set of metal miniatures on top of that. Mm. Now, for anyone out there that really wants to jump in heavy with this, it's very good for you, because it means that you can really mix the teams up very early on. So you can play double copies of Maximus, if you want to see how that would play, because they are planning to do organized play with this game. It's going to really come alive with the organized exactly. play, isn't it? And actually, look, we have as well, because obviously the pre-order is coming down on the Monday, but we have a bunch of painted minis for this, mm -hmm. and we are going to be having our own Aristea themed week. Yes. And um, that's going to be going live from Monday the 20th of November. So mm -hmm. we'll have a whole week with, you know, unboxing, going through everything. Yep. Yeah. Uh, myself and Carlos get to sit down and have a good deep chat about the Soldiers of Fortune who you may have seen have actually started to leak out there on the internet. Okay, yeah. So me and Carlos sit down for a good chat about that. And we get a couple of good games in. So Carlos versus Killian, me versus Killian, just having a good time with the set and actually having a look at what happens whenever you mix those teams up. Because in the base book, it says, here's a suggested pair of teams to get you started. But there's nothing to stop you mixing them up and just really going to town. That's where why the that fun is. There's addition is really good. Yeah. Because if you have two copies of Maximus, imagine it, Maximus versus not Maximus. Oh, <laughs> we look. We're, we're going to show you a couple now because I wanted yeah. to because I'm impatient. I'm not going to not going to lie. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I decided I really wanted to see Maximus. Uh, yes. So here we go. Let's show him off on the camera if I can bring him in. Ooh, there he is. Look at him. He is a beefy chap, isn't he? Well, I don't know if he's beefy, but his armor certainly is. Mm -hmm. Look at that well, he's, he's rocking around with the the shield from a Jotun. Oh, oh, exactly that's what that's from. Shield. Yeah. Of course, he had to get it personalized with his name. It's so badass. And of mm. course, the, the art on the cards, 
absolutely matches exactly what you're seeing on the box. Mm -hmm. he's, he's quite a serious, honourable looking chap, isn't he? Yeah. The whole thing with Maximus is he is the ultimate tank. Yeah. He can do whatever the hell he likes on the field, mm -hmm. pretty much. He's got lots of health. Yeah. If he gets locked into a ranged character, that character is not really going to have a good time oh. getting away from him. Now, if so, we compare him to someone like 8-Ball? Yeah. Now, 8-Ball, he's a controller on the tabletop. So you see that big stick? Mm -hmm. He can use that to basically force people into different squares. And one of the main objectives of the game is to get into a scoring zone yeah. and be there at the end of the round and have more of your uh, Aristos in there than your opponent. Aristos, so what a cool name. Yeah. So having someone like him, he can literally just put a stick to their back and just push them out. So you can imagine him just getting that stick in behind someone and just forcing them yeah. out of the scoring zone. Well, we're not gonna we're not gonna give any more away now. You oh, guys, no, 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 no. <laughs> you guys will have to wait till Monday the twentieth. We'll have our Aristea uh, themed week where you're gonna get a chance to see all of these guys in action mm -hmm. and all the guys playing some some matches. So you can decide whether it's yeah. something you want to get into. Yes. So that is that. Now, speaking of Corvus Belly, of course, we want to have a little look at the expansion that got mm -hmm. got spoiled. We we got to see a real close look of it. Look mm -hmm. at it. Um, during the Fortune week. theme week. Um, so you're going to get a chance to relook at the, the Soldiers of Fortune, but we have mm. a few little snaps to show you now that went up on the site this week. Mm -hmm. So Soldiers of Fortune is the actual name of the expansion. Yeah. So it's four new characters, mm -hmm. which are going to essentially make another team that you can play in the game. So you've got Hannibal. Yeah. He loves it when a plan comes together. <laughs> oh, Ben, give him that one. I, oh, come on, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little clap. Well, no, I, I only didn't laugh because I know you stole the joke from someone in the community further down. I, I actually <laughs> want I? to make you scroll down now <laughs> to find out who deserves the credit on that one. <laughs> I didn't even read that comment, I swear. But you can see his abilities. He's, he's pretty quick, he's got plenty of energy. A couple of really nice new abilities that are going to start changing up how the game is played. Mm -hmm. You've then got Valkyrie, basically the tank for this group. Yeah. Very, very nice miniature. I've actually held this miniature mm -hmm. in my hand. Yeah. Uh, we then also have uh, Laxby, sort of a, an Infinity style hacker, doing some very interesting Very stuff. cool pose, yeah, I like that yeah. a lot. Although some of her switches, which are these things here, mm -hmm. with the exclamations and the shields, okay, yeah. are quite expensive. But what they do whenever you trigger them is very, very good. Uh, we then have Senior Massacre. Senior Massacre, wow. Yeah. <laughs> He's a very much a devil may care, smart ass assassin. Yeah. Can you see where they're going with this? Yeah, I can see. I don't. Wanna, I don't want to say anything about who that might or might not be based on in the Marvel <laughs> universe, but okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they are planning to do quite a few of yep. these through it, and we have more information of that during mm -hmm. the theme week. Mm -hmm. But th this is a game that Corvus Belly are going to be fully supporting. Yeah. Also keep an eye out during the theme week because we have some amazing prizes up for grabs during it. Now, I'm going to ask something here because forgive me, I, I, yeah, may, yeah. And I may get this completely wrong, but can you use Infinity models in this? Are they going to be no. tied? No. no. So it's so, a completely different system. No, no, it's it's its own system. Yeah. These Now, there are some alternate sculpts that you can mm -hmm. bring from Infinity into this. Ah, but you can't wrong. just grab like a random soldier off yeah. the battlefield and put him into this. This is very much Saturday Night Live, mm. you know, think, think Celebrity Deathmatch, only a little more serious. I'm good with that. I'm very much good with that. Now, speaking of Infinity, though, mm. we also have a little bit of a sneak preview for Infinity for of today. Course. Of course. Uh, basically, I got Carlos while he was across here. I couldn't have him over and not get him sat down to have a little bit of a chat about some of the things that Infinity are looking to do in the future. You know, Carlos, he loves showing off all of his beautiful artwork that he does. So um, I tell you what, I'll, I'll not DG anymore. We'll just go straight to me and Carlos. Humanity has been driven from Earth, but now it's time to take it back. Join the Reconquest and fight the Scourge on the Drop Zone Commander Hub at beastsofwar.com. Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of War Hub. Take command of elves, dwarves and orcs in this game of massed fantasy combat on beastsofwar.com. Hi everybody, I have sat down with Carlos in the studio to get a bit of an update from the Corvus Belly studio. So, Carlos, what's been happening, man? Uh, a lot of stuff is happening these days. The artists are full steam ahead working. Mm. Let, uh, let me share with you some information, okay? Um, for example, uh, <laughs> all the artists, one by one. Uh, 
Kibu, one of the illustrators, is currently making a pinup for the Kauri Sentinels. Okay, uh, seems irrelevant, irrelevant information. Now use your brains. <laughs> if someone is making a pinup for the Kauri Sentinels, that means the Kauri Sentinels, which is a rare release miniature, is getting a box at some point or something Ooh. like that. Or this might be go to a book. This might go to a new sectorial army for the Toha. Who knows? <laughs> you know. Just you know. You know. Throwing <laughs> at you the information. What else? Uh, Bagus Utomo, a great uh, artist, is making covers, and right now he's making a, a cover for a left, for a left Vedic army with the Danava hackers, with the with the Takinis. Lovely, lovely artwork, which I'm not showing now. <laughs> but uh, guess what? Guess what? <laughs> if he's making the cover, stuff is happening. Okay. What else? Francisco Rico is making a, a new unknown Japanese troop. Uh, lovely oh, pinup, yeah, yeah. full body artwork. Yes. Okay. Lovely. What else? Uh, I already mentioned Utomo. Uh, Hosen Hui. Super secret project for Hosen Hui. Hosen Hui is the artist who usually makes the layered covers, the, the big cover for uh, Operation Red Veil, Operation Iceton, that kind of stuff. Okay, super huge projects. Right now he's making one and it's super secret. And I can tell you that it's the kind of the stuff that takes a lot of, of work to do because it involves a lot of design, mm. new designs, stuff. What else? Um, the sculptures. Antonio Moreira is making more uh, Aristea stuff, more uh, Aristea figures. Top secret is happening now. It is top secret. What else? Uh, Fausto Gutierrez, Javi Ureña, sculptures for also that work for Corus Belli. Talented people. Super secret. Everything is super secret. <laughs> oh, but, geez. Yeah, but this seems just a person speaking. Let me show you some pieces of artwork that are currently arriving to, to, to the inbox folder for okay. everyone here. So let me show you something. All right, so what do we have here to kick things off? Well, this is the Blackjack. Uh, we didn't have artwork, uh, you know, we have a lovely design, a lovely miniature, but we never made a, a pin up for the artwork. Kiwu, the artist Which that I really mentioned, cool. The artist that mentioned that he was making now the Kauri Sentinels mm -hmm. has made this lovely piece of artwork and I wanted to show it to you here mm -hmm. because the Blackjack deserves everything from us. <laughs> okay. Absolutely lovely. More uh, stuff. Next up, uh, what do we have here? Well, this, oh my gosh, this is totally unexpected and new. This is the new design for the Karontich for the Combined Army because as you know, the Combined Army is receiving all the lovely toys lately. All the best things go for the Combined Army. Mm -hmm. So this is the new design for the Karontich miniature that I think is coming in January, I guess. Okay. Uh, lovely everything, everything. I, and this, this, this is lovely. <laughs> well, uh, I, heavy I'm pistol, speechless. HMG, plasma carbine. What's a plasma carbine? Plasma Carabine uh, uses plasma ammunition, mm -hmm. uh, also uh, has a template when it impacts and plasma ammunition makes you now roll for BTS and normal uh, values of, of, of armor. Ouch. So that is a great way to, you know, uh, it's like ammunition that makes uh, hurt you in different ways at yeah. the same time. That yeah. makes uh, a very heavily armored guy who has a low BTS, mm -hmm. he will suffer because of that. Yeah. Uh, and super, having to take the armor roll on yeah, top. Yeah, uh, super biotechnic uh, troop mm. that has a high BTS but a low armor will suffer on the other way. It's yeah, yeah. a multi-purpose thing. Very cool. More stuff. Uh, next up we have... Ooh, yeah, nice the hospitalier. Nash hospitalier uh, and I have been showing this, this uh, concept design for many seminars now, but guess what? We have a few images that you would love to see. This show them. Oh, okay. Okay, stuff, okay, we have okay. we have stuff to show. Only some privileged people was uh, uh, aware of these mm -hmm. 3D renders of the hospital here. Nice. Leave it, leave it. Don't, don't change. Oh, okay. no, don't change. The, the Infinity fan base was uh, really looking forward to, to see these <laughs> okay. lovely okay. figures. Uh, these figures are currently on Angel Giraldez's desk now. So, Can you paint it? Yep, uh, painting them. Oof. I don't know if he's Angel or, or Sergio Luque. Mm, and I, I, I'm in trouble now. I don't know the, the, the correct. <laughs> words for this, but it's going to be a lovely four-figure box of Hospitalier Knights mm. and Joan of Arc has come so recently, mm. so you put together, you know, uh, <laughs> peanut butter and chocolate and, and they are <laughs> lovely. Keep on showing okay, renders okay. because moving, these moving miniatures along, are lovely. As you can see, there's one with one hospital night with the sword, so that is the perfect proxy for every kind of equipment for the hospital nights. Yeah. One with the HMG, one with multi rifle, and one with the medic kit mm. because it's great to take a doctor hospital night inside a doctor hospital fire team. Ah, oh, I see. 
They they look absolutely badass. They've, you've really captured that that yeah. panel feel with these. And they're big. They're bulky. They're you know they're the N three standard panel knights. Great mm -hmm. stuff, really. Yeah. We then have a little bit of artwork. Yeah, because Francisco Rico, the artist that I mentioned, that he is currently making that new Japanese troupe, has just made this lovely hospital night. So there you have there you have the color scheme that you have a, a, a excellent guide for painting these miniatures mm -hmm. that one cannot wait to make photos to them when they're painted. <laughs> I will enjoy it so much. Remember that the hospital nights have a cathedral in Planet Flower Hema, so you usually uh, you see them surrounded in snowy areas, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is great for painting, not so great for photographing, okay? Because uh, usually when you put uh, miniatures on the snow, mm. the white balance thing makes everything look dark, <laughs> and you have to care about that. Yeah, right. Ideas, just pitching ideas here for you guys. Yeah. Get the spectacular nights, paint them with red, and put them in snow environments. The red will pop up a lot. They will look lovely. Uh, look at the artwork. Look at the way the shadows were applied here by an expert mm. artist. Everything is lovely. Because 2018 is going to be awesome, I can tell you that. <laughs> so what, is this a little sneak peek into 2018? Well, this then? is January, yes, this is what we release in January. Okay, all right, now, you have some other stuff to talk about. Oh, yeah. Because exciting things oh, yeah. have been I think, happening. I think I have the RSM. logo here, I think I have <laughs> RSM, the logo right yeah. here. Yeah! So, so, what's been happening? Uh, well, Aristella, uh, right now, I don't know when you're publishing this video, but we are still on the pre-order uh, month of Aristella. At the time of filming, we are. Yeah, yeah, really. So, Aristella, get it. If you, if you are curious about it, you can read the rules, you can watch uh, the lovely how to play videos. I, I, uh, Miso War is going to publish uh, a special thing week. Of course. There are already um, unboxing videos. Uh, check Twitter. I've seen t people in Twitter who I, are playing the game for the first time, mm. tweeting their, oh my god, this game is awesome. <laughs> and there are two options uh, for the pre-order. There is, there is the, um, the normal core box, which if you pre-order will come with lovely shiny foil cards mm -hmm. and the uh, Collector's limited edition that will bring, you know, it's a limited, very, very limited numbered edition with metal miniatures, with uh, some some extra artwork yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and and the metal miniatures are extra apart from the from the core box mm. uh, plastic miniatures. You know, consider that the collector limited edition has the special core box inside and mm. then more stuff. So as you can see, pre-order from October 26th to November 13th. Mm -hmm. And talking about Aristeia, uh, check out social media, Twitter, etc. Because a lovely app has been published, mm -hmm. fin finally released, delivered to the to the public for free. It's online. Uh, there's there's a link. Uh, you will find a link probably in this video also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And check it out because it's a lovely app for rolling the dice. I mean, if you mm, go somewhere to play Aristeia and you don't have the dice, get your phone, ta -ta 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 -ta, and there you will have the the perfect okay. solution for rolling the dice. If I'm clever, I can bring this up on screen right now. Yeah, okay, so Carlos, uh, run me through. How do I, how do I operate this, this okay, app? Okay, uh, you have a uh, top on the screen, uh -huh. uh, all the color dice, and you have two bars there for player one, player two. Just, uh, okay, let's make an attack and a an okay. defense. Okay, please, for player one, red dice and orange dice, red that dice. will be... That will be nice. a pretty normal attack. Okay. Uh, and and uh, take for the player two the blue and the green, which is pretty standard defense. Okay. Very good defense. Okay, there you go. And then we just go. click roll. Roll, roll, and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There you have all the symbols, there you have the result of the roll, and that's cool. Uh, maybe uh, you want to roll again, but this time the defense is Maximus, and Maximus usually has uh, an extra block. You can uh, so, yeah drag uh, the shield, the block symbol, to the roll. Empty here. Yep, and then it just automatically. So has it. yeah, and and Wild Bill or Luna, for example, usually have mm -hmm. an extra success on the attack. You yeah. can do it like that, or you can click on Mushashi that right on the top Up of here? the screen. Yeah, click on Mushashi. Oh. Okay. You will find the characters there. You can click on the character, for example, Major Luna. Okay. And you can drag her attack right on the bar. Ooh, very Ooh, cool. There you go. All right. Well, let's say she was attacking Maximus. Can I drag her this? Uh, I yeah. can drag this? Yeah, you can, you can. And then we roll this? Yeah. Roll. Da, 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 da. There you go. Lots of <laughs> shields for blocks for Maximus, blocking all the impacts from Major Luna. Mm -hmm. So, 
Uh, I can tell you that this app, in, in a most primitive version, was used by the testers of Aristeia mm -hmm. because at some point we didn't have the dice from yes. China, but we were able to send the link for the app, so the external testers outside from Gorosu League were able to roll yeah. the, the game with them. Mm. So this is totally for free. Another tool, another way of Gorosu League supporting mm. their new game. You will find lots of stuff and lots of love from Gorosu League mm -hmm. regarding the whole Aristeia project that we are so enthusiastic about. Mm -hmm. 2018 with Aristeia is going to be incredible, I can tell you that. <laughs> Lots of stuff, still secrets, still secrets there, yes. waiting to be released for you guys. Well, I will say, everybody, uh, as Carlos has said, we have filmed an Aristeia week for Corvus Belly. There are lots of cool things that we're showing off in there. Some stuff that hopefully won't have been seen before and some gameplay. So us actually settling Maximus. down. Maximus. Oh, uh, you, you ready Maximus. for Warmoth? You ready for War, yeah. Carlos? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, everybody, tell you what. Are you excited for Aristea? Are you excited for what's coming in the future of Infinity? Get your comments in below. We will move on. We will see you later. I'm Ben from The Weekender, and you are watching The Weekender. I can finally break free of this, this shell. <sighs> For okay, I'm sorry, Carlos. He loves to tease with stuff coming out. <laughs> it is just the way he is. It's in his blood, isn't it? It really is. He likes. He he just knows that he he has to make the the community like rabbit dogs, just waiting for the next information. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, to be honest, I, I'm happy to see anything. More, more stuff from Corvus Belly always makes me happy, uh, if yeah. I'm really honest. Anyway, on to some other... Orn? Orn? Orn. On to some other stuff. Ben, what has been happening this week in the news, my friend? Uh, yeah, so kicking things off from the news front, we actually got some uh, cool uh, previews that came out of Privateer Press and on, leaked onto social media. And this was for some new resculpts that were coming oh. your way for Cricks. Uh, so yeah, leading the way, we actually have the Death Jack, which I think is possibly one of the coolest looking jacks out there uh, in the range so far. Mm. I just love the look of this model. I think it's going to be an absolutely amazing thing to try and get down to the tabletop yep. and paint mm. that that hand for example with the chain wrapped around that's it, it. The, looks yeah. so amazing and cinematic it's absolutely fantastic the chain the chain was the first thing that really grabbed my attention when i looked at it as well actually just it's almost just like it's, it's killed so many people mm. it needs to be either locked up or just held together yeah <laughs> well, i i have to say i've built the metal version of this Mm -hmm. It is a heavy piece of metal. I'm wondering, oh, yeah. are they going to switch to one of their resin hybrid kits for this? I hope they do, because mm. they're doing some really so. nice stuff with that. Yeah, It's nice seeing a, a face of a, of a Warjack with the big horns coming mm. out of it as well. It's nice seeing, it's got a lot of personality. It's really, the way the head's tilted with the right hand kind of mm. gripped forward, it's got a real, like, what you looking at, kind of, mm. <laughs> like, what? On, yeah, see, that's, yeah. that, that's definitely one of the things that I really like about this particular model for the Death Jack and in Cricks as a whole. A lot of their jacks actually have a lot more personality, which mm. is something that I love to see. Because when you see a lot of the stuff from Kador and Signar and stuff, they're all very much the cookie cutter style jacks. This one, you know, has a real character to it, and it, it looks fantastic. I can't wait to see what they do with this. We say, you know, painted up and stuff. I can't wait so to see with yeah. both the official scheme and whatever they want to do elsewhere as well. Whatever so. Thomas Mendes does, Mendes does with this. Mm. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, I'm actually going to disagree with Ben a little bit personality-wise because John has been listening to a lot of the audiobooks mm. and character jacks. They're actually quite intelligent. So think like a really yeah. smart family yeah. dog is sort of the level of intelligence yeah. you can get here. Yeah. But you but you get that looking at this model mm. where some of the yeah. Signar and, and Kador stuff doesn't doesn't always convey that personality. Yeah. Like whenever they whenever you see the animated videos of Private Depress, which I love so much, mm. whenever they turn their heads, it's enough. Mm. You know, whenever they flick around or whenever their eyes glow, mm. it's enough to give the personality. But sometimes the model doesn't really maybe get that okay. family dog thing across. Okay. Whereas this to me he looks full of hate. <laughs> like, uh, he looks yeah. really like, what are you looking at? Bring it on. I'm going to use this to open your chest and pull your heart out. <laughs> Kali ma. Like, it's got a real, you know. <laughs> I think that hand is a little big for pulling hearts out. He would just take out the entire chest cavity. <laughs> you know, what, what else? It does the same job, doesn't it? Yeah. Ooh, who's this? Uh, yeah, so following on from that, we've got a new resculpt for Lord uh, Hexerix uh, mm -hmm. for those Scorn players out there. You can actually see him compared to the older model below in uh, the images as well. Mm. So as you can see, they've gone for a little bit more of a dynamic look to him. Uh, they've got that Volge up in a sort of combat stance, which is really cool. And there's a lot more intricate detail worked into the armor pieces as well compared to the original uh, sculpt. Uh, so facial, yeah, looking yeah. very, very good. The, the, the detail in the face is stunning. It's really like, like there it's kind of, the older model looked okay. He looked kind of like, yeah, I'm a leader. Like I've got big armor that makes me cool. But the new one, like he's got a real skull, a real, like it's all in the eyebrows and just above the, the, the mm -hmm. mouth. I like that a lot. 
Yeah, let's see, this, this goes back to one of the old things he used to say about uh, War Machine. He, he who had the biggest shoulder pads would win. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Okay, then that's not what I was it's aware of. It's a very 80s thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I do like the fact that they are going back to re-sculpt something mm. that's an older miniature. They, they did the same with Haley very recently, and the sculptors, the talent in, that they have in there now is just absolutely incredible. They have such a feel and flavour for what each faction should look like. It's just incredible. And then the last thing we have here, Ben, what's this? Uh, so the last thing we've got is actually some concept art for the new version of Iona the Unseen, which is going to be a new Warlock character for the Tharn, mm. which are part of the Circle Orbros. Uh, so we're seeing a very savage-looking uh, lady here. Uh, I particularly like the way that they've um, shown off how they potentially want to go with the pose in the top yeah. left of the picture as well. Mm. So hopefully we're going to actually see like this sort of dashing, striking um, uh, figure on the tabletop. So it's going to be very cool indeed. And again, one of these things it's going to be fascinating to see painted up there's so much bare skin going on there as well that you can get a lot of tattoo work going on, which is really cool. So hopefully we see some people getting really intricate with their details and brushwork on this. Bring, so, bring that back up just for a second, just actually. I really, I, this one is super intriguing to me. I like that on the, the, the concept art, they've gone into the detail to say running with sword, coming back to swing, claws slashing across. I love that it's got the facial expression and also the bit about the dreads. It's mm. nice to me to see the body in a relaxed, almost, you know, mannequin position. Mm. But then it's more interesting to see the, the the thought that goes behind her character and face right at the concept level. Mm. Um, and not not that they're not leaving that up to the sculptor, but they're giving them so much to work with initially. Mm. That's kind of new yeah. to me, actually, seeing that in the concept art. Yeah. Also, from these, you'll normally see someone like Dallas, who'll sit down to paint this, will mm. have this sat in front of him as a sort of a rough guide yeah. as to where he should be going with the main colour mm -hmm. palettes. She does, cool. she does need a wee job in the toenails though, doesn't she? Well, but <laughs> a Manny Penny might be nice. <laughs> just a wee one. Just a, just yeah, a wee, just, just a wee you know, One of those five minute ones you can get? <laughs> yeah, that'll do. One of those ones you get in a shopping centre. <laughs> <where they, laughs> do you guys ever go to the... Oh, that's, that's a... I'm, I'm right, right, tangent cha time. Channeling, channeling my inner war in here for Run a second. Ahead. Do you remember there was a, there was a phase about... I know, eight years ago, where mm. every shopping centre had one of those shops that opened where you could go in and put your feet in and little fish would come oh, and yeah, eat all yeah. the dead skin off your, off your feet. Oh no, there's a video of Sam, he did that while he was in Japan. Oh, it's hilarious. It's hilarious because he, he puts his feet in and he starts feeling them going at his feet and he starts laughing uncontrollably. Tickling them? Aye, Sam is incredibly ticklish. He, he literally <laughs> just jerks and twitches if he gets tickled. Poor it's crazy. Fish. He's sitting there kicking them and they're just trying to do him a favour. Oh, he eventually like... got to it, but you just see him sitting there going... But they, they all disappeared, didn't they? They, they, they all came for about for like a year or two. two. Them still about. I don't know. Ben, you ever been to one of them? You ever get your feet I I've never eaten? been to one, but I've I seen them in my sh local shopping centre quite, quite a long time ago. And now it all seems to be filled with like eyebrow threading stuff. Eyebrow <laughs> threading has been around for a while. Vaping is the one that's ever around. Vape, oh, vaping God, is yeah, just... Right. Uh, and they're all they're always like they're always dead cool looking, way too cool for me. They're always like vape lab, and everyone goes in is really smooth looking. It's kind of like <laughs> vaping's the new jazz singer kind of thing, you know. I, I never look cool enough to go into a vape place. And have you not seen John with the the new ones that he has? Well, John's problem you is he keeps you think he's just putting out a bloody cloud bank though. It's just no, but he keeps walking by, and he'll, he'll walk by, and I'm like, hi, John, and he'll be like, and it'd be like custard cream. Because yeah. usually you see smoke, and you go, ah, oh, don't want. Don't, like, you'll see a cloud of smoke coming, you yeah, be like yeah. that. Now John walks by, and I'm like. What's that? Oh, strawberry, <laughs> strawberry. Oh, custard cream. Mm. Oh, honey. Mm. I, like it's. Yeah, there was one I actually got when I was vaping. Strawberry jam on toast. That's very specific. On the on toast yeah. thing, though. I love toast. It, yeah, but it was actually getting that 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 flavour of toast with or without butter. Do you, without, do you without butter? Without butter. Is that a personal preference or is that? A... Uh, no, that's personal preference. It's I like nicer. I like butter and jam. Mm. I do. Anyway, Ben, what's next, my friend? <laughs> uh, next up, we're actually looking towards uh, the grim, dark future and some stuff for uh, Warhammer 40,000 going forward. One of the big things is that uh, Forge would have actually teased oh. the new look of the Cataphracti pattern Terminators mm. for the Space Walls, which are actually called the Var Varagir Terminators. I've probably ruined that name anyway, but that's how it uh, it sort of came to me in my head. These are, as you'd imagine, uh, some really cool Space Wolf looking guys. So they've got all the runic talismans going on, all the bits and pieces that you'd see typically on uh, Space Wolves giving them that extra dose of character. Uh, again, it's one of those things that you know, people love about these guys as a chapter, is that they all have this, their own character, their mm. own beliefs. They all have a little bit more of like that sort of drunken revelry going on compared to the sort of straight-laced space means you see out there. Mm. But yeah, these Terminators look pretty cool. Uh, no doubt there's going to be a whole bunch of different options available for them as well, because Forge World love doing their add-on packs and stuff. So uh, yeah, if you like the idea of using these in the Horus Heresy, or potentially as, you know, uh, like an honor guard for your uh, space wolf captains and stuff, then this could be pretty cool to see thrown into the mix. 
Very cool. Very yeah, cool. yeah, I'm, I'm digging them. I'm, a, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I think Primaris has ruined me. I just, I know, yeah. like, yeah, I feel like I'm now just everything needs to be bigger. Mm. I'm not sure if they're big yeah, enough th- for me. This is going back in time, though. Yeah. And hang on, have you not seen the the old Terminators that were on a 25 mil base that were like <laughs> <laughs> huge, but just like oh, no, oh, no, no, you mean they, they, they were tiny? Yeah, and they, they were like really narrow, just like. <laughs> No, not something I'm sort of familiar with. I don't, I don't know. I, I like have one in here somewhere. I'll wait until I see them painted. I think they're they're not they're not winning me over. What is winning me over though is the next bit of news from GW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ta da! Yeah. Look at that. Dark angels and blood angels coming soon. Well, coming yes. 2017. Oh, so these yeah. ones are definitely coming out. In is that 2017. right, Ben? Keep... You there, Ben? Yeah. So yeah, I am here. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, so yes, Dark Angels and Blood Angels are going to be coming out towards the end of 2017. That fills the whole space of all the codexes for this year. And then going into next year, we're going to be seeing the Chaos Demons at the very start, sort of January, February mm. time. So that should be really cool. Yeah, fair play to them actually meeting what they said they would with what ten codexes yeah. this year. Um, you know, they, they, they've been coming out th- you know, thick and fast, but not yeah, yeah, not yeah. too fast, not too slow. Um, and I it's nice to see a little bit. Seeing what the Blood Angels get though. Because, I mean, like, the last time they got a codex, they were the guys that brought in the... Oh, wasn't it the Storm Raven, Ben? Yeah, it would have been the Storm Ravens, yeah. which sort of changed things up when it came to the whole sort of yeah, aesthetic was... and the sort of style of 40k. Right, that was the I'm, the big I'm particularly interested in what's going to happen with the Dark Angels, sorry, Justin, because they're always seen as, like, this mysterious force in the world of 40,000, 40, especially for the Imperium, mm. considering their sort of aspect of the Fallen and things. Mm. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how the storyline is uh, taken forward with these guys, I think, so... What they've been up to? Yeah, yeah. I suppose because I mean, like, I suppose they have the the levels of secrecy built into the chapter. Mm. So you'll have the the neophytes, and then you'll work your way closer and closer to the truth of the Dark Angels. Yeah. You know, I think they actually have one of the guys from the Heresy that betrayed the Primarch still locked up in their uh, space fortress I monster. Don't, don't know if we expect to see that now, but it would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> wouldn't that be a nice? That'd be a real nice tease if that was actually the case. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, there were rumors that a lot of the Primarchs were going to start coming back in the new edition. So, I mean, like, we've seen Martarian, we've seen Magnus the Red, mm-hmm. we've seen Gulliman. Yep. I have to wonder if Lionel Johnson is going to make a reappearance. Well, he is locked away, well, no, no, regenerating in the Rock, isn't he? So no, 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 yeah, it's, really... uh, it's his second in command that I believe is in the Rock, not Lionel Johnson himself. I think someone out there okay. corrected me once whenever I said that. <laughs> okay. See, well, whenever you be... correct us, we remember. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be very interesting, as you say, to see if he comes back, because obviously Cypher was carrying his sword, so yeah. you know, it'd be nice to see that back in the hands of the actual uh, the warrior in, in, in command of everything for the that Dark Angels. Thing, yeah. So. You have to wonder what Cypher did whenever the, the whole cataclysm happened. What he mm. was up to, and has his plans maybe gone awry? Mm. 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 Okay. All right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry, All right. this is from <laughs> years and years of reading Black Library books. Yeah. And reading codexes and stuff, there's so much story behind these guys. But it's great that that's what you think about whenever you see these ahead of time, because then you're just you're you're hoping for a little a little yeah. release like that that's just going to inspire your creativity and ex- yeah. ex- inspire that kind of nostalgia you have yeah. for the books you've read. Although for the the Blood Angels, I have to wonder if we're going to see Primaris Sanguinary Guard. That'd be badass. Yeah, that would be really cool. Hmm. Oh, big big wings, big 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 wings, big big, big, big wings. Big wings. Um, okay, anyway, Ben, what's up next in the news? Uh, next up, we've actually got some stuff coming out of Plascraft Games. Uh, now, these guys have done their amazing Color Ed range, which is uh, a whole bunch of sort of pre-colored terrain that you can put together very very quickly and easily and use it on your battlefields for a whole bunch of different systems out there, like Infinity, Carnivale, and all sorts of things. Their newest terrain set is actually an amazing looking post-apocalyptic prison oh, or I just prison yeah. uh, that can be used in your games of, for example, The Walking Dead or maybe even thrown into the mix or something like Batman the Miniatures game because interestingly this terrain is actually scaled between 28 mil and 35 so it should work for both systems which is really cool but as you can see uh, these are some amazing terrain pieces that come with a really cool sort of like forecourt area where you can have all the sort of fights in the middle of the prison but then there's also the actual prison system itself with all the locked up uh, cells and things as well and of course there's a really cool tower and everything so this is going to be one of the things that's going to be a proper focal piece when it comes to your scenarios on the tabletop and you very, said pre cool. pre coloured because uh, yeah it's not painted it's just the way yeah. that it's way the the products meet so is it is it printed so think plastic card mm-hmm. with a a printed sort of scene on mm-hmm. it so if I go back to this yeah so you see these walls here yeah that's essentially plastic card and then there's like a layer of detail mm-hmm. in front of it uh, the one thing I would always always do with this is if you look at this one mm-hmm. so you see where the the tops of the cells are you see the white edge yeah. I would always maybe take like a little bit of black or grey mm-hmm. marker, just try and match it into the colours sure, the other side sure. of it. 
just to blend it a little bit, but it looks great. Yeah, it absolutely does. I, I, I am I am well on board for this actually. I am still I'm still to play uh, Walking Dead All Out War. Really? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, so ashamed. It's oh, actually, dude. It's uh, we, we're sitting with we have tons of Walking Dead stuff. We did it with the Walking Dead boot camp. We've loads mm-hmm. of stuff. Um, we've loads of foreground t- terrain, of course, as well. But yeah, we did the big shopping it. mall. Yeah, like so. I I I I need to stop making excuses and just get it <laughs> sorted. Um, this for me actually recreating like with just a little bit of work the actual prison scene from The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. Because it was all about the prison, but then you had that big bit of grassland in front of it where they were doing the farming, they were doing their vegetables yeah. and stuff, and they had that big run-up path that came up to it so they could see the zombies coming, and they had the, the fence then where they were stabbing them through the gates. I would love, I would love to take that and make a proper 6 by 4 table mm. where you have the full, so you have a good scenario where you can see them come and see mm. them building until they break it down. Yeah, or I can just put a T-34 down. Well, and have the governor roll in. Boo! Boo, governor! <laughs> Boo, governor! But hang on, hang on. Daryl had his most epic moment in that scene where he threw a grenade down the, the bloody <laughs> barrel. Spo- well, no, it's not spoilers now, is it? That it's was like bit, three years if, ago. If, yeah. if you have not watched this by yeah. now, your own damn fault. I haven't watched any of the new Walking Dead at all yet. Really? For this What's season? you up to? Oh, no, no. I'm only at the most recent season, I think, started two weeks ago, three oh, weeks yeah, ago. Oh, yeah, so it's back um, on. So I haven't watched any of it yet. Yeah. That's. I've been watching Stranger Things, Stranger Things 2. Oh, I, no, uh, I, I burnt my way through it. The levels of stupidity in that show pissed me off. I, I apologise, <laughs> but it was me sitting at the TV going, why are you doing this? What? No, don't, no, why, why, no, 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 stop it. Oh, God, why? There's, um, I, there's nothing better than finding someone that has a topic that enrages them and just getting like a cup of tea and be like, so uh, Justin, Stranger Things, great show, yeah? And just, <laughs> <laughs> just... No, no, it, it was one of the kids, what you find in the trash can. Okay, okay. You get why I'm annoyed. Yeah. Season that, two. Right, no, is... no, don't say any more about season two because I've only seen four episodes, okay? Then you'll so have seen this. He's a kid, though. He's a kid. <laughs> but after what happened in season one, quite surely he should know that doesn't look like it's from around here. I don't want to touch that. I don't want to be near that. Yeah, it, I think it's it's one of those things that you watch a, a horror movie and someone's like going into a room and you're like, you would just never go in there. No, you no. just you would you know the killer's in that house. Why yeah. why would you go in? Yeah. Oh, you left your purse behind. Okay, then right bye. It, <laughs> it's why I liked Cabin in the Woods. It was the first original horror movie I'd seen in years. A Cabin in the Woods was, and it's amazing that you say original because it's original that it replicates but also mimics and and kind of takes the mick out of. All the horror movies that came yes. before it. Uh, if you haven't seen Cabin in the Woods, uh, Josh Whedon, isn't it? Yes. Uh, go, go and check that out. It's, it's an amazing, amazing good. movie. Um, anyway, bit off we topic. topic. Yeah. Yeah. We need to. I need to get you all just to shout at me until I play All Out War. It just needs to happen. <laughs> uh, it needs to happen. Okay, Ben. Anything else in the news? Or is that us? That's us wrapped up, isn't it? No, no, that's us for the news. That's mm-hmm. us for the news. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Because I have something that. This is going to be so epic. I'm jealous of you, right? Yeah, I, I, am, I am. I'm not going to lie. Um, anyone out there who's been watching for a while will know I love Firefly. I love mm. space adventures with a crew that you can kind of develop and take on missions and then you can steal things and kind of evolve and you can kind of have that ongoing legacy system of a mm. crew of a ship that you're piloting. If anyone's ever played Faster Than Light on the PC, it's a game I absolutely adore. I can't wait for Gale Force 9's um, uh, Brown Coats and Brigands. Mm-hmm. But we were absolutely blessed to have Colin yes. from Battle Systems yes. come in because they're going to Kickstarter very, very soon with their new game, Core Space. Hi, guys. I'm Colin from Battle Systems, and you're watching The Weekender at beastsofwar.com. Okay, everybody. I have been joined by Colin from Battle Systems in the studio. Colin. Hey. You're not here to talk about Terrain. No. You have not a game anymore. to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> we have a game. Yes, absolutely. Core Space. Okay, so... Uh, what is Core Space? Is the, the the question I'm sure is on everybody's mind. Well, basically, Core Space is uh, it's uh, it's set in the sort of far future, about fifteen hundred years in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, you play as this uh, this group of traders in this really hard universe. Okay, in fact, the hard galaxy. Um, there's five main species in the galaxy, and you're just trying to make your way, basically. Mm. Um, and you're going to need to run missions with your ship falling apart around you and mm-hmm. uh, just try and keep yourself and your crew alive from mission to mission to mission. So, yeah. Sold? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the concept sounds incredible. I mean, it's a, it's a type of game I've not really seen played too often before. 
I mean, like from the sound of it, you're traders, so you're you're not soldiers, you're not military. No, no, we're absolutely yeah, you're absolutely a team of traders, mm. and with um with this, you're you're really just looking after because between games, you're going to be leveling up your characters. Mm. So it's not just a let's have a run in and let's have a big old shoot out first yeah. one to kill your opponent. You're going to need to be searching um, with our. Uh, what we call our real search uh, mm -hmm. system, whereby the items that you you actually find, they're actually already on the board. They're inside the crates, and y you have to kind of collect, and you have mm -hmm. to, you know, build your skills as you go from game to game. So, Hayan, you're telling me if I open up one of these crates, <laughs> there's nothing in that one. <laughs> oh, the, did you empty one? I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So you'll be able to open a crate basically. Yeah. Um, and inside the crate, you can fit all of the equipment that you'll yeah. find. Now that could be anything from you know weapons, uh, equipment. It could mm. be credits, money, um, data pads, anything. It could be the mission objective. Okay. Um, and when you take that out, it fits exactly into your dashboard. Right. So. So basically, all of our characters have these really nice dashboards, and there's slot here, which I've actually already filled up with some gear, but these all pop out. And you'll fill this up with the gear you find. So there is a limit to what you can carry. Absolutely, yeah. And if you find a big item, it's going to take up more room than a small item. You know, so you really are, you know, limited to what you can carry. You know. Yeah. Now, if I wouldn't put stuff all over the board, would help. <laughs> uh, let's see, where'd my rifle go? Ah, there it is. I like the idea of this. It feels very sandboxy. So okay. you can actually jump in and start exploring the game world that you've created here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right now, uh, obviously. It's going to be competitive game. Yep. So me versus you. Mm -hmm. uh, what else is in the game that's going to make it special? Okay. So basically, uh, as much as we're going to be after very similar objectives, you know, on a, on, a, on many of the missions, we're going to be after the same objective. Mm. Um, we we're going to have to exchange fire. I'd like to win. I'd like you yeah. not to win. It's pretty simple, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, however, because you've got um, the in in this very sort of hard galaxy, there's this. There's these um, sentient beings called the Purge, the mm -hmm. robotic synthetic creatures, that nobody really knows what they are. So is that these critters? Absolutely, yeah. And what am I seeing here? Okay, so this guy, this is the sort of the rank and file, this is the harvester. Okay. okay? This is a synthetic um, robot whose only task is to basically harvest your biomass. Okay. Uh, okay, um, and uh, yeah, they're the rank and file. Um, as as you get more sort of um, up the scale, you'll come into devastators that are a little bit more powerful. Uh, is that one of these, John? That, that's the guy, absolutely. So let me bring this up for everybody. Ooh. These are a little bit more powerful. <clears throat> as the harvesters start to get a bit, you know, run run down or run over, mm -hmm. uh, the <clears throat> you'll be able to bring in uh, the, the, the game will bring in the devastators, mm. and they're like more range combat, more powerful. Mm. Uh, and you've got assassins, and you've got. Um, let me let me bring them in. Now, if I get one of these miniatures wrong, just tell me I'm dumb. <laughs> You're doing well. <laughs> tell me I'm wrong, and tell me I'm dumb, and tell me to switch out. Okay. So, assassin. This is the assassin. Yeah. Now, unlike the harvesters and the uh, devastators, uh, the assassin's not so much of a hive mind. Mm. It's kind of half connected to the hive, but also quite intelligent. So mm. it's quite free and independent. Okay. And are these sort of an AI component to the game? Absolutely, yeah. So the game will bring the game will bring in the uh, depending on the the level of hostility at the time. Mm. So as you go through the game, the hostility level rises uh -huh. based upon um, the time that's taken in the game, but also how much you interact. So if we're mm. constantly shooting at each other, the um, the hostility tracker will you I know see. advance. So, and so the game will ramp up to play against us. Uh, without a doubt, yeah, it will absolutely do that. Mm. And you know, there's going to be times when, as much as you're my opponent. Yeah. We may get overrun by the game, so we may uh -huh. have to team up to kind of fight back the game because mm. we really just want to care about our characters. And if I can keep, if we team up and I can keep you alive, it means I can probably keep myself alive. Okay. And I might have had that character for three or four games, and I don't want to lose his skills. Mm. I don't want to lose his equipment. Well, the 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 legacy aspect sounds like it's it's really fun and really clever. But I like that it's you versus me versus the game. Absolutely. Yeah. And then I decide at which point, or we decide at which point, we're going to turn our back on you know each other. And uh, well, no, 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 I'm not turning my back on you during this. <laughs> I, I, I might shoot you in the back if you turn your back That's on me. That's probably what it is. Yeah. Now the the other things that are in here. So I'm seeing 
some people on the board here that don't seem to be members of our crew. Okay. We, we have two separate crews, three yep. aside, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. So I'm looking and I'm seeing this gentleman here. Is he a member of the crew or someone else? Okay, so this guy is a civilian. Mm -hmm. And you have civilians which are, you know, moving around the board uh, as well. Because you're in, you know, in this setup we got here, this is a, this is a kind of a... You know, cyberpunk style shopping you know and you've got the mm. you've got a shopping mall down the middle and you've basically got your civilians who are going to be wandering around now they'll interact with you as well they're controlled by the game they may trade with you they may attack you they may run and move and hide they can even join you um, and uh, you know help you out for a short period of time and or till the end of the game okay so it's now you versus me versus the game versus the game yes <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah um well, this is interesting. Um, all right, well, let's, let's have a quick look at some of the crews here because okay. the miniatures for them are really, really nice. So who is this? This is Ariana. She's the captain uh, of her ship, uh, the Iron Hope. Now, uh, she's the captain of the trader team, and with her, she's also got uh, uh, Roy Kirk uh, and Gak. Okay, so... Uh, so this is Roy Kirk. Okay, he's your... He's your kind of, uh, he's been around a bit. He knows his stuff. He he's, does look like a bit of a grizzled old veteran. He, he certainly is. And if you underestimate him, you're going to be sorry because he's, you know, he looks old, but he's fast. He's really fast. And finally, you've got Gak. Um, oh, he's a big boy. Yes, exactly. He's, he's actually a, a quell, um, one of the quell. And he is, um, he's actually got four arms. Um, so uh, what happens is with this guy is that, that most of the time the arms are kind of locked together by his bone structure. Mm. But when, um, when the going gets rough, it's very painful for him to do, but he can in, un unlock his arms and he's got four arms to combat you with. Yeah, so uh, I'll take that. He's a big guy as well. He's, he's, a, he's a good sort of seven foot. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. Seven foot tall blue alien ready to smash your face in. Absolutely. So, um, <laughs> and then we've got, we've got Jace. Okay, so this is the, the other crew. Now, can you just mix and match the crews in the box? Yeah, you, you can indeed. So mm. you could have, you know, you could have Gak on on Jace's team, for example. Mm. So he's your he's your classic kind of smuggler trait, you know, yeah. captain, uh, heroic, dashing, you know, guy. Um, and he's got a couple of uh, a couple of guys with him as well to help him out. As mm -hmm. uh, we've got, we've got uh, this is Renton. Okay, now he's. He's kind of ex black ops kind of guy. He's the tough nut. Not much of a conversationalist. I, but I was going to say he looked a little bit shifty. He's definitely a bit ex commando. You know, short mm. on words, tough on action. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've also got Lars, who is um, he's a tech, and he um, although he's running, he doesn't like running. He's a bit grumpy, but you know. When something goes wrong, or if you need assistance with anything, he's the guy. Mm -hmm. um, and the techs in this game are, you know. They they are very useful in game to be able to help you turn the tide of any mm. mission. I like the sound of this. I like the fact that it's it's not just straight up we we want to kill each other. I like the fact that we're getting in and we're trying to basically loot stuff for ourselves so mm -hmm. that we can level ourselves up. Correct. And I like the idea that the game's going to play against us and push back against us to mm -hmm. the point where we might go, look, I'm kind of trapped in a room here. If you help me out. Can we make a deal here? Can something happen? You can absolutely. Yeah, there's. Um, we've had, certainly had um, one of our um, latest uh, public beta tests. We had uh, a fantastic game, and it got to the point where the 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 purge were really overpowering the game. Mm. Um, we also had um, uh, some uh, of the Galactic Core arrive as well, which is okay. another AI. Uh, which can get involved. They're basically the, the local militia and police kind of force. Uh, so they came in. It all got a bit hairy. And um, we actually had one of the team members decide that they had a skill that could help. And mm. they actually, the tech was pretty powerful and, and shut down the purge for one turn. It was just enough for the uh, his opponent mm. to, to get most of his crew to safety. <laughs> and he got them out of the ball. Now, it, it, it was kind of, they'd exchange a few shots with each other. And there'd been sort of like, you know, some... Uh, some quite hairy moments, but mm. ultimately, that someone stepped in to help. Yeah. Um, an offer was made to trade some equipment, <laughs> and uh, yeah, the deal was done. So, and that that guy saved his crew, mm. saved himself a lot of uh, you know uh, expense between games, mm. buying new equipment, and you know traded off some equipment he had to to help. Yeah, why not? And you're saying we have are these another? Group? Absolutely, yeah. So you've got you've got the um, you've got the. 
uh, these are your uh, galactic guard okay again they're the, they're the rank and file they're like the the, the, the police force if you like mm -hmm. um, they will absolutely come in and they will attack you or the purge okay. so yeah these these are the uh, these are the galactic uh, mm. core uh, they're basically the rank and file the police yeah um, and you've got the director here who will come in and uh, okay he, he'll also he'll also have a bit of a uh, a little bit more powerful Mm. Um, they're not nice guys, the police, you know, they're very corrupt. It's a, it's a run-down galaxy, they do what needs to be done. Um, but uh, yeah, they'll help you sometimes if there's a lot of purge. Ish. Ish. <laughs> but once those purge are under control, mm. their guns will be back on you. Yeah. Alright, well, you, you've given me some images to show off here as well, so let's, sure. let's not forget those. So, the entire thing is coming as a single, complete box, yeah? Correct, yep. And so inside the box, I'm assuming, do we get everything we're seeing on the table here pretty much? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Okay, so all the terrain and everything that you can mm. see on the table. There's a couple of characters here that we've just, mm. you know, we're sneaking in for you guys. But everything you can see in there, all of your main, uh, all of your main characters, mm -hmm. uh, you've got obviously two teams, you've got the, the Purge there, and you've got all the Purge, including like, mm -hmm. the very powerful live one. All your dashboards, all your cards, all the terrain, all the room furniture, mm. nice rubber-based game mat, you know, real deluxe set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the idea that you're getting a full 3D terrain set in the box. Mm -hmm. I like the idea that this is all your battle systems modular style stuff, Correct. Yeah? yeah, absolutely. So basically you can build this out however you want, mm -hmm. or you can follow the missions, which I'm sure there probably will be a few of. I've, I've definitely, yep. <laughs> and then one of my favorite components is actually this. <laughs> the shipboard. You actually have a ship that you're trying to keep going, and if your ship actually gets destroyed, yep. What's that going to do to you? Okay, well, you, if your ship, basically your ship, at the end of each um, each mission, mm. you'll be rolling, you'll be trading. But one of the things you'll be doing is you'll be rolling dice to um, to affect your ship. Your ship will degrade over time. So if you don't spend some of the money that you're that you're looting on repairing that ship, eventually something will go down. Be it you know propulsion, life mm. support, um, maintenance, whole integrity. Integrity. When that gets to zero, you can't field your team anymore. So your team is completely out of action, um, right. and you need to start again. So you need to very carefully balance mm. what you spend on your ship. Um, the shipboard is really good as well because it's you know saving. It saves you having loads of bits of paper. You record your mission mm -hmm. uh, rewards. It records your current amount of assets, the number of crew you've got, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So it's uh, it's it, it kind of has a dual role. It's it's a nice additional piece to actually do that that you know account keeping. Sure. Yeah. But uh, as well as that, you've got a lot of the artwork done for this, for okay. the characters. Yeah, um, absolutely, yeah. I love the design. I love <laughs> the, the feel and flavour of this. This man on the left, I have never seen a man so happy to be <laughs> jumping through the air, firing two guns as he goes. Yeah. It's a little bit hot fuzz. Yeah, yeah it is a little bit, yeah. Yeah, Roy Kirk, like I say, he's, he's the experienced veteran. He doesn't, mm. he, he doesn't mince his words. He's, he doesn't really talk a lot, to be fair, but, you know... When the action's down, he knows exactly what he needs to do, and he's quite happy there. Yeah, and the gentleman on the right seems a little bit overconfident. Jace, yeah, well, he's your he he's your sort of classic dashing hero kind mm. of you know, um, almost like a Han Solo stroke kind of character. So mm. absolutely, he's he's he, he knows his chance. He knows mm. his luck. And then who are our next two? Okay, so you've got Lars uh, mm -hmm. in the on, on the left there. He's yeah. your tech, and you can see he's a bit angry. He doesn't like you messing with his stuff. Yeah. Um, he, like I say, he doesn't like running, but he, he knows his stuff. And on the right, you've got Ariana, who mm. is uh, quite frankly just beautiful. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Important question. She's got two guns. Okay. Can you have two pistols and fire away with them? <laughs> uh, for some for some weapons, you can have dual wield. Yeah, mm -hmm. for, for specific weapons, um, which means that. Just using one action, you get to use the combat stat, uh, stats of both of nice. those weapons. Yeah. Nice. And then we have the big man himself, Gak. Yeah. Looking absolutely <laughs> pissed off. Yeah. He's uh, again, you know, it's a, it's a hard universe out there, and you know, Gak's not, you know, doesn't mince his work. He, mm. ten he tends to speak speak to himself in the third person as well. Gak's going to do this now, you know, this type of thing. Really? So yeah, absolutely, you know. So um, he is, uh, yeah, he's part of the quell species. Like I say, they've, mm. they've got four arms. And yeah, you can really see it on this image where the, the weapon is actually designed to be comfortably wielded by someone with four arms. Yeah, absolutely. And see, see this, is a, this is a big galaxy. Mm. Um, and, you know, when, you know, if you've got a company like Geiger's Weapons, is the, guy, the people that make our weapons, mm. uh, they're, gonna, they're producing weapons that they want to make the most amount of money out of. Mm. So they've got to be easily handled by. So a lot of weapons have got extra... Areas where mm. certain species, and the quell are one of the larger species. 
So multi-species weapon design? To a set, well, if you want to sell, you know what I mean? You know, there's yeah. five main species out there. You don't want to just sell to one. You want them all to buy your weapons. It's a fair one. A fair yeah. one. And now, you're saying he talks to himself in the third person. Have you done much backstory for this game? Is there much background that people can dive into? There is, and this is what it's all about. It's all about creating a really nice uh, narrative sort of uh, story, a whole a whole lore and uh, universe for to, to just have fun in. And mm. we... Um, we have got um, stories written for the game as well. So, and those stories are just amazing. Mm. Um, it's so it's so nice to sort of sit and read a short story with all your characters in there, mm. and then maybe play that mission yeah. and have a kind of an alternative ending, really, yeah. to the to 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 that. Uh, and it really fleshes out the characters. You really understand the characters. Um, and you know, there's nothing to stop you, like you said before, like swapping characters over. There's no mm. reason why one one you know. Mm. Yeah, Roy Kirk doesn't decide that, you know what, I like Jace is the way Jace works. And, yeah. you know, you have a swap and you move around. So mm -hmm. Now, the other thing I'm seeing here is on the bottom of our dashboard, I'm seeing hunter support and crew. I'm assuming, can you swap out the different classes for each of your people? Absolutely. So when you first start with a character, you pick your character, you've got an empty dashboard, you, place your you choose your character, you place them in the top of the dashboard. At this point, you've got a choice. Mm. You can choose between the various different classes. Mm. Um, so you again, you've got support hunter, and uh, you know, a bit like you know, very popular video games. Once you've chosen that, it, it dedicates the skill path that you can take. So a tech will have a lot of really powerful skills, mm. um, not necessarily straight combat skills. Um, support are normally some kind of heavy guys. They have a lot of endurance. Kind mm. of um, a hunter would have a lot of stealth skills and a pretty good in close combat. Mm. Uh, a soldier is pretty good at ranged weapon and so on and so forth. Um, and one, once you've chosen that, you're not going to then be stuck down having to take skills, the, the, those specific skills. What happens is you get to choose from the skills on there. Mm -hmm. So even if you've got two different guys that are support, they mm -hmm. could both have uh, a very slightly different sort of character traits to them. Well, let me very quickly just pop one of these out just so everybody at home can see. So this is the, the Hunter build. Okay. And from it... We can actually see just all the little pips. So, what Absolutely. are the the ones we're seeing here? Okay, so we've got various ones here. We've got um, we've got marksman skill, which is uh, the little crosshairs there, and mm -hmm. you've also got weapon expert, mm -hmm. and you've got um, there's like flurry, a close combat one. We've got ambush, the little guy with an arrow. We've got fade to uh, fade to black, which is a, a kind of a stealth skill. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we've got another close combat skill there, which uh, helps you defend against uh, mm -hmm. attacks. But each one of these, each one of these little um, uh, little skills have got um, some circles around them, and it's you mm -hmm. choose which area you're going to level up. So you might take level one of one skill because that's mm -hmm. all you need, and you might leave it there, mm -hmm. saving your career points to be spent on a much more powerful skill. You'll never fill that board up. No character is powerful enough. So every time you, <laughs> you know, you're gonna, you're gonna have to make your true choices and and deal with that in the games. Mm. Well, for me, anybody that knows me knows I, I love the idea of legacy. The idea that the character means more to the, to you than just a faceless soldier on the battlefield. Correct. Right now, uh, we've also got some three D renders here that you sure. wanted us to show off as well. So this is really just nice close ups of the the different crews. Absolutely, yeah. We the, the the renders are absolutely um, beautiful, and um, the you know you've already seen the miniatures. They've come out absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's Ariana and Gak and Roy Kirk. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that that's your trader team. Some close ups of the harvesters there. Um, real mechanical, simple. Um, you've that got, one's not mechanical. <laughs> yeah, he's actually organic. He's the live one. Um, he will come into the game, and when he does, really, you kind of need to be hot heading in the opposite direction, to be fair. So right. he's got this cloak around him. It's mm. actually a hollow cloak. Um, what can happen in the game is the civilians that move around and you can interact with, um, depending on the level of the hostility, mm -hmm. one thing that can happen is a civilian could have been a live one all along under hollow. So you could oh, be standing so next to... Okay, now I get it. Hollow, not hollow. Okay, hollow, yeah. Holographic. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> okay. I feel dumb. I feel dumb. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I'm abbreviating everything. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so he's got like... Uh, yeah, he's got... Um, he, he, basically, he could... He could be a yeah, civilian. Hiding he in could masses. be next to you. You mm. can have a civilian join you only yeah. to find out that it was a live one the whole time. Um, yeah. And here's some of your civilians, you know. So, yeah, so uh, we've, we've got, got a human and alien. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, a couple of humans, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you've got your alien in the middle there. These, these, are, these are really nice guys. I mean, for example, you talk about the story. Mm. This guy, Callan, 
uh, um, on the left. He's uh, yeah, yeah. He's uh -huh. he's um, he's he's in us. You know, he's in one of the short stories. Mm. As is the girl, and as is you know many of the characters in the game. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice. It's when you're playing the game, you really know the characters because you know they're they're fleshed out in the in, in story mode. You know. Yeah, and I suppose if they actually start acting like they, they do within the short stories, that can just be a really nice, funny, flavorful thing on the tabletop. It is, it is. You do, yeah, based on the uh, the chance dice and what the civilian's doing, you do feel like they are acting out their roles, as it were. But of mm. course, you know, sometimes they change. Yeah, and then next up, what do we have? Ooh. Okay, so in the middle, um, you've got the uh, galactic director. Mm -hmm. um, you can probably see from his face that he's a bit, bit of a smug guy. Yeah, you know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm stopping myself from hearing him. <laughs> Born into power, you know, very smug, very um, sure of himself. You've got, you know, one of the rank and file there. We've got a few mm. poses of these guys on the right. And on the left, uh, yeah. you've got the juggernaut. Uh, the juggernaut is a big, powerful, this is the guy, this is like the riot guy that you yeah. send in. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, he's pretty well armoured once Sometimes. he starts moving. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hello. A couple of gang members here. You've got um, you've got your low life on the left here. Yeah, with, with a leg missing. With a leg missing, yeah, and you know these guys, it's very clunky. You know, it's not the best tech. Um, these are the real criminal kind of Mad Max style kind of gangs. This guy on the right is uh, a huge guy. He's pumped full of chemicals. I mean, there's really not much of his personality left, to be fair. Yeah, well, I mean, like, for me, if, if you're playing the gang member, you know, a sharp bit of metal is a sharp bit of metal. <laughs> you know, you, you, you've kind of got that shiv mentality of it'll kill you. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. And the, the game controls these, yeah? Yeah, so, so these are just two of the, the gang members. Uh, mm. We've also got a guy you can't see here called Zed, who's kind of the leader. Mm. Um, and, you know, he can control... Um, the uh, the big guy there with um, you know he, he's quite pretty dumb to be fair and just wandering around but yeah. he's pumped full of chemicals and once he yeah. starts berserking so you're in trouble an, yeah. an archetype then uh, pretty much <laughs> <laughs> well I mean like I, I have to say I'm excited to see how this game actually plays on the tabletop Colin thank you very much for bringing it in Justin no problem Everybody, I tell you what, drop your comments in below. Are you looking forward to getting Core Space? And this is coming to Kickstarter, yes? Absolutely. Okay, sorry, I almost forgot to check that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, get your comments in below. We'll move on. We'll see you shortly. It's time for 28mm World War II action. Will you recreate history or reshape it your way? On the Bolt Action Hub at BeastsOfWar.com. Cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. It's really ticking all the boxes for me. And speaking of boxes, it seems so silly. I think I spoke about it last week actually, but I want to mention it again. I love the fact that you can run about the map and literally interact with the crates, lift mm -hmm. off the lid, and find stuff inside them that you can then allocate. It seems mm -hmm. like such a silly thing, mm -hmm. um, but it, for me, it, it not being just a counter, it not being just a, a insignificant kind of marker, it actually being something physical that is in scale with your characters, yeah. in proportion, and suits the setting, it makes a difference. It brings it that role playing aspect, which I enjoy. It, it gives a very different feel and flavour to the game. The mm. fact that you do have to go out and hunt down yep. better equipment yep. in the map so that you're not just running at each other headlong with your, your crappy, crappy, and I mean crappy, <laughs> vending machine pistol to try and take out <laughs> another cruise captain. Yep. You are going to go hunting and searching through crates to find you know a nice little energy rifle yep. or something that you can just go. And I mean, this is we're going to have this stuff coming out soon. So you guys will be able to see all the games that, that Justin played with Colin um, and, and, and on the, the beautiful tabletop they had set up. But how did you find the decision points where you were like, actually, I need to now start working with Colin a little bit to fight the purge or fight the AI or fight that those guys that really split the game? See, there, there's, there was one beautiful moment I had in one of the games we played. It was running away from some purge. And I was just looking at Colin going, you know what? I don't need to be fast. I just need to be faster than you right now. <laughs> So you, you have that moment of, okay, we're working together, but at the last minute I may turn on you and do something nasty just because, yep. oh, look, you have a shiny gun. <laughs> I love that, that sort of competitive cooperative mix yep. that you have within the game. Mm -hmm. I will say, whenever I first sat down to play it, it was a bit of a head stomper for mm -hmm. me to realize that it wasn't just running in and shooting. Yep. You had to go looking for that. You had to take care of your objectives, mm -hmm. having to take care of your ship, having abilities that I yep. didn't really know what I was doing with, to do, what, ugh, what to do with to begin with. Yep. 
and then learning more and more as I went further into it was really cool. And did it change much? Because I know one of the missions you played, you had to like get off the base and get into a ship and get away. Because yeah. a lot of games you'll play five or six rounds and wherever you end up, it doesn't matter. As long as you've eliminated your opponent, complete your objective. But this, you had to actually get out as well after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, again, it's, it's how much do I commit myself? Because mm. you constantly have like a tracker that's just building up threat, building up threat, and eventually the bad guys, because the game has AI built into it, mm -hmm. are just going to constantly be on you. Yeah. You have to find that tipping point of okay, I've 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 done enough here. No, yep. I need I need to bug out right now. <laughs> they're, they're coming for me. I'm away. I'm away. No, not today. Not today. <laughs> So uh, well, look, I, cool. I can't wait to show everyone, uh, all you guys uh, at home, um, more of that, more of the gameplay. It's something that I think is going to be a huge success. It goes on Kickstarter November 17th, so I that's believe, next yes. Friday. I believe so, uh, yes. all, all being well touched. We know Kickstarters can sometimes be a little bit ebbing and flowing, but all yeah. being well. And we'll have loads more content of that, so you can check it out and decide if it's something you'd like to support. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Kickstarter, yes. we've got a few doozies to look at. Ben, what is first up Kickstarter-wise, my friend? Yeah, so the first one we're going to be looking at is from Studio Level Terrain, and this is the Bantam Alley Wargame Terrain set. Uh, so this is a set of terrain that has been designed for 28mm, 32mm sort of scale combat for use in your post-apocalyptic games on the tabletop. Uh, they've got a whole bunch of different sort of junkyard style terrain sets for you to pick up. There's a whole bunch of scatter terrain, there's scenery, there's entire battlefield templates as well that you can build up from, and there's also a whole bunch of bases too. So if you're interested in trying to sort of theme everything that you've got in your collection, around the terrain that you also have they offer that at the same time which is really awesome uh, as i say this is all resin so you can go and get it from these guys on kickstarter right now one of the cool things about this is that uh, a lot of people have been talking about it in terms of use on the tabletop in terms of terrain for your gaming but this kind of stuff is also really nice in a sort of modular way for you to build up really cool dioramas as well so if you're one of those people that really likes that aspect of things you can go and have a look at it from that aspect too so yeah well I actually, just as I'm sneakily trying to be quiet here, <laughs> while the camera's not looking, I actually have some of this. And the thing that jumped out to me, Ben, very similar to what you just said, actually, is when I had a little play with this, um, I thought, to me, it was a real terrain builder's dream. Um, so you were talking about the modular aspect. Let me bring some of this under here. So this is some of the tubing system that they have. Uh, oh my goodness, if I can actually find out where my hand is. Here we go. Um, so this basically comes with little... We, we've actually primed this grey, but it comes in little segments. So you can sort of build it up yourself, um, you know, in whatever way you think will deem deem yourself best. Now, we have just primed this grey. It, it came black, I believe. Yes. Um, to give you guys an idea at home what the kind of quality is like. It is lovely. The detail on it is absolutely fantastic. Um, and there's a good, this is only a tiny, tiny sample of what actually came in the pipes box. There's a, there's a huge array, so you could go a bit wild. Um, so there's this nice industrial sci-fi, but it could also easily be sewer, or it could also easily be just city piping vents up the side of a building. It's, it's quite versatile. Um, and it also has a bunch of these lovely, um, these grates, which come with a selection of different styles of vent so or of hatch door. yeah door yeah. Um, so you could go with something that looks more kind of hinged you could go with something that is a bit more heavy duty and sort of you know villain basey it's almost more safe like there and um, you could go with something a little bit more low tech that should fit in i'm just maybe making oh there we go that's a nice way for it to go on um, so there's a bunch of different options there as well where you can kind of customize it to your board or you can actually just use ones they have that are all one piece so this one for example comes all as just one unit and it does like right down to kind of the, the feeling um, and sort of the detail on the the, the hatch I guess mm -hmm. is the way like this one for example you can imagine this hopping open and you may want to get in that way or perhaps the whole thing kind of slides away if you kind of use all these mechanisms around the side it's actually very detailed there's the normal kind of color in the back but it's 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 gorgeous it's nice it's simple um Batman is the thing that springs to mind, or if you wanted to, it could easily be heresy. It could easily be Imperium. We have Fallout coming. Fallout's this, a good shout, actually. This is one of the things. <gasps> this type of terrain here. Yep. I would always say, this I would do if I was building inlaid terrain and inlay this into a table and then get a magic mix or something. Yep. So that you can actually have like those hatches and stuff mm -hmm. built into like a cliffside yep. or your hills. You, you, know. you need, actually, you know what, you've nailed it. Because, yeah, look at this hatch. This would be perfect if this was built in to the side of a, of a building or side of a mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, yeah, dude, that's, yeah, because I was, I was, must admit, I was really thinking about how it would look if it was in its own terrain piece. And we also got, like, the, the details they've gone into, this is like a, a fuse box. Yeah, or this could be, it could be vault number 10 yeah, that yeah. you have to break the, the door open off and get into the. We skull in there. We skull? Yeah, down the bottom. 
Oh, look. Oh, I don't know if I can get right, right in there. If I can shoot. Oh, there he is. I, I like the detail on these a lot, actually. And they've also got... See, this is the thing that made me think Batman. The ah. traditional... This, this, this dumpster, which you can glue in place so you can either take these away or you can, you can sit with them open if you wanted to out and, and change that up. This, to me, was where you would bump your... Bump your villains and dump them because obviously Batman doesn't kill anybody. He just bunks them on the head and <laughs> whack Batman and then dumps them in a dumpster. Well, if if you leave it, the rooms could open and you could maybe pop those into core space. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they have. I think they have their own systems, don't oh, they? Yeah, but, yeah, they have plenty of little cardboard terrain pieces yep. that you can put in. But if you want to add that little bit extra, little bit of resin, there's nothing to say you can't always add more to your stuff because yeah. more is more. Whenever it comes to proof, more is more. <laughs> more is more. Yeah, can't, more, Warren's saying. Yeah, Warren's can't, saying. Can't, can't argue with that. So yeah, I, I, I'm a fan actually. I think it's a really really nice Kickstarter. That's open at the minute, Ben. Is that right? Yeah, it's open at the minute. Uh, it's got about sort of. Let me check. I got about, about 14 13? days left on it, so okay. if you're going to go and check that out, you can go and dive in for it. Yeah. So studio level terrain, guys, awesome. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Good by me. I, I'm. I'm a fan. Mm. Cool. What's up next then, Ben? Uh, next up, we've got a really cool looking game that came out of Hysterical Games, almost a little bit out of the blue. Uh, this is based in their world of Panzerfaust, which is a little bit of a sort of like a mix up between World World War uh, and so historical gaming <laughs> and <laughs> so fantasy World War realms. Yeah. And this is called Spitfire. And this is their aerial <laughs> combat game that's going to be done in 10 millimeter. And so the idea of this oh. is that you're going to be playing using a set of rules that were based on Air Wars 1917 <laughs> by Wessex Games and playing as the Orcs that are the British or the Dwarves, which are the Germans, in aerial combat over the cities of this, their sort of fantastical world. Did you just say so. the Orcs were the British? Yeah. Yeah, the Orcs are the British. They're always the lads, that's why. So there you go. <laughs> Hello. I'm, I'm surprised at the... the the dwarves being German, but the the miniatures they have for like twenty eight mil scale yeah. German dwarves look really cool. It's yeah. it's flipping awesome looking. Yeah. Actually, this is not and something when you see the art of the orc flying in on as they would name it a Spitfire. Spitfire, it's Spitfire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, very cool. It needs to be careful not to shoot the back of it in the head, but mm. <laughs> <laughs> like he's got very, very looking like he's about to just take his brain right out of the sky. There, <laughs> this um this is epic. Do we have any idea how it's going to play? Uh, uh, I don't actually it. have any idea of how it's going to play, but as I said, uh, the rules are based on an existing system, and they are going to be putting up some demo rules for you to pick up mm. from the Kickstarter once you've backed it and stuff as well, and you can see it on their main page. So over the next couple of days, as we're winding down towards the end of the campaign, you'll be able to give it a look and see what you think about it. We actually have seen a couple of the models sort of sneaking out as well, and they look very nice. As I say, it's all 10 mil, which means their idea is that there's going to be a lot of these models on the tabletop as you're playing, which is really cool. Uh, so it's going to be very fascinating to see how it all comes together and how they've sort of added this sort of fantasy vibe in there but anything with dragons in it is a plus from me and then it's also got dwarves in it as well so that's also a plus i love how they've put like the raf logo on the wings of the wyvern and they've also called it the orc hurry keen h-u-r-r-y keen like that's just oh it's so cool it is fantastic yeah i wonder so yeah a neat little campaign this one definitely I wonder uh, how like wounds and stuff are going to work in that. Like, will you, will you be able to take out a wing or like a rudder? Like, is there, or is it just going to be kind of like a creature who just takes damage? Or are they going to have really customizable? Because uh, if they have breath attacks and machine gun attacks, can you take the machine gunner out? But then the creature maybe go wild and do its maybe. own thing. Is like, it? there's a lot of flexibility there. Yeah, it's a very very cool idea. Mm. It's it's from the mind of our buddy Rob, uh, mm -hmm. who is just he he has really went to town <laughs> on this game because he he did the original one where it was the foot sloggers. And now he's taken it to the air, which is, Rob, thank you, mate, because this looks fantastic. Yeah, that, I, uh, yeah. And this is a very easy one to drop in on. So if you actually want to drop in on this, you're only paying 25 quid. Wow. And that's the top pledge. Wait, what? Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Top and pledge that... is 25 quid, and you get all three stretch goals that come in there. My goodness. Not, not that we would sway anyone's hand. Yes. To part money, especially with the wallet draining system that is Kickstarter. <laughs> However, <laughs> worth if it's up, if it's of interest to you, worth a punt, maybe. Yeah. So, uh, cool. So, wrap us up then, Ben. What's our last Kickstarter of the week? And last but not least, we're actually looking over towards uh, Mantic Games in Kings of War Vanguard, which is coming oh, towards the sort yes. of final week on Kickstarter. Uh, obviously, obviously, we've talked a little bit about Kings of War Vanguard before. We've also done a little bit of a de uh, let's play, a sort of demo game, as it were, as well, using some of the beta rules, I believe. Um, but this is obviously the Kickstarter to get you started with the game, get you up to speed with it all with the rules and things. And it also comes with the two warbands, which are the Basileans and the new Night Stalkers, which are going to be sort of the new faction that's thrown into the world of Mantica. Uh, the whole sort of base is 
behind vanguards is it's going to be you're playing at the head of these arm head of the armies that go off to battle and you'll be playing all the scouting missions the assassination uh, things disrupting supply lines and things like that and sort of grading and fighting with your war bands as you go forward and sort of plotting a little bit of a mini campaign alongside your major battles at the same time so if you like the idea of games that are sort of all linked together and there's nice narrative to things this is the kind of game that you might want to get stuck into especially if you're a big fan of kings of war and mantica as a whole um mainly because you can use a lot of the sort of models that you already have for your armies for your warbands as well, mm. which is really cool. So you can build a little bit more character into the mix, which is good. Yeah, I actually was chatting to Rob about this. I was actually mm. emailing him because I was I was watching the campaign closely as it, it was kind of plodding along. And if you go down to the stretch goals, I'm so happy because they've hit the 90,000 one, which I was waiting Where for is, them to. Yeah. Is this yeah, keep going, keep going. You'll get there eventually. Yeah. I love oh, stretch goals. Ogre. Here we go. The Ogre Palace Guards. Oh, they may be ready. Mm. Keep going. Keep going down. Here, uh, we, here's the here we go. Keep going a bit more. There he is. No, there he is. It was 95,000. Sorry, head back up again. There he is. The Resin Ogre Palace Guard. Another one added to the warband. I just mm. love the look of these guys. There's something about giant minis, specifically ogres in this case, with like halberd. Like, there's a reason I kind of have a soft spot for Grey Knights. But these are Grey Knights with nice flowing royalty looking cloaks about them. And I like the idea of an ogre in armor. Because mm. ogres normally are like... Big barbarian dudes. Yeah, whereas these guys are just really sleek looking. Mm. Really, like, the halberd specifically is a very noble looking weapon. It's something we're seeing a lot of though these days is companies are not afraid to actually say, well, no, 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 why, why wouldn't an orc or an ogre yeah. be, you know, civilized? Yeah, absolutely. I know, it's making some very cool armor and Breaking stuff. Breaking out of the mold a yeah, little yeah. bit of what people expect. Yeah, yeah. Cool. What, what faction would you choose, Ben, if you had to choose between the two? Uh, I think I, no, I normally have a love for dwarves, but I think that in this case I'd have to go with ogres. I think ogres would be an absolutely fantastic warband to make for this because lo I love the idea of like an ogre scouting force, yes. especially with like the, all the war paint and stuff on them. I think it'd be absolutely amazing. So, yeah. I'm on the same page as Ben with this. Uh, honestly, I'm I'm looking at the abyssal force that you can get with this. If you look here, you're you're all about the demons. Oh yeah, you're all about the succubus <laughs> and heliquins. Heliquins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they folks. Just look like a lot of fun. Well, look, I'm going to wrap us up there. We very much hope you are enjoying your Saturday and getting some hobby done. Thank you so, so much for joining us. If you're watching this on YouTube, or indeed if you're watching beastofwar.com, tomorrow we'll be doing this all again with our relaxed XLBS. Um, you can have a free membership for seven days by going to beastofwar.com and signing up there for backstage. And you can come and check that out if you like. So thank you very much, Justin and Ben, for joining us. You guys have a lovely hobby time, and we'll potentially see you tomorrow. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.